Nope, not for me. Um... I'm not quite as big on Scooby-Doo as most people are, but I'd be damned if this iconic group of mystery solvers weren't branded into my brain thanks to WB and... What's this Scooby-Doo? No, 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 not now. Okay, maybe a little bit. But there was enough for me to just sit down and sometimes watch through shows and movies, and they'd have my full undivided attention. My favorite? Mystery Incorporated. No contest. I will die happily on that hill. And I know it gets a lot of gripe because of its animation quality, but Be Cool Scooby-Doo had its moments where it was clever and possibly got the most laughs out of me. You know, compared to the show that is often claimed to be ripping off of. But as most new iterations go, it eventually got the axe. We did get a few movies and cameos here and there, but then we caught wind of this. I didn't care much to truly explore any of the info or expectations surrounding the show. All I knew was that for obvious reasons, expectations were pretty low. But then the show came out. And before I could even entertain the idea of viewing the first episode and judging for myself, everyone was collectively whooping this show's ass. I bet the creators of Velma saw this as bad publicity being good publicity, but I don't think they quite understood how bad it actually all looked. And I just had to join in on it. Velma is quite possibly one of the worst pieces of animated media that has ever came to light according to critics, and quite literally the fans. It's a more mature take on Scooby-Doo, which is kind of unique. There were shows that kind of came close to it, but we never got a full-on violent Scooby-Doo show. One that takes itself incredibly seriously. Seeing Scooby-Doo but with blood and violence? Damn. But I finally got around to viewing the first episodes released prior to the making of this video and... The feedback was not an exaggeration. This show is poop. Wait, this is Velma, right? This show is shit. I mean, this show managed to break boundaries. And judging by recent reviews, this may only be the beginning. In an abridged sum up before the summary, all I can say is that the first minute in I was annoyed, five minutes in I was disgusted, ten minutes in I was confused, and by the end of it, I was ready to fight. That was episode one. Episode 2 was just as bad if not even worse. And since I'm moving super slow and bogged down by the burdens of figuring out what I want to say what hasn't already been said, Episode 3 and 4 drop. And yeah, still bad. But maybe a few, uh, maybe somewhat decent things came out of it. I know that's a stretch, but the scales are tipping it. The only bit of humor that snuck up on me, and yeah, I guess there's a lot of jokes if you want to call it that, was the escape montage where it appeared Daphne got shot in the head with an arrow, but it was just a little prank. That's the only true Scooby-Doo joke so far out of the four episodes that dropped. Also Frank Welker is an absolute unit for not exactly reprising his role, but still being a part of the show, despite the And maybe episode three's go limp joke snuck a pretty big laugh out of me. And then they follow that up with needless violence. Is there anything else? No? That, that was it? Nothing else good? Great, now it's only downhill from here. Where do I even begin? These are the characters we've remembered fondly, as Hanna-Barbera's most iconic group of mystery solvers. Even if they were ever so slightly altered in ways we loved or hated, we still identify with these characters along with their traits and habits. Velma basically takes every single character and makes them either the most unrelatable or just downright cruel and despicable. And not even in a clever way. No one in this story is remotely likable. No one. Velma is the main protagonist, and my god is she the absolute worst of the worst. Every single word that comes out of her mouth has to be a reference or explanation to an awful joke or needless and bitter attacks on other people. These kinds of characters are finding their way into protagonist spots and I don't like it. Right. I mostly just read Zootopia porn, so... What? Who responds like that? Who, who tells somebody that? Why did you say it so confidently? And who reads Zootopia porn? I've only just heard about Mindy Kaling and, at the time, I've only heard small things about her. Like her role in Monsters at Work or Disgust in Pixar's Inside Out. Pretty harmless character, but now by today's standards, I'm pretty sure that this was a warning. I don't think Mindy being a reprehensible person isn't that far from the truth, but it truly reflects here no matter how you spin it. Velma has to solve the mystery of her missing mother, all while trying to find out who's behind the string of murders around Crystal Cove. Unfortunately for her, 
Her hallucinations are directly tied to a trauma that prevents her from doing any mystery solving. And if she does, she could risk having a heart attack. No one seems to care because either she's just that irrelevant and unattractive to everyone, yeah, a joke they'll continue to run down your throat and explain it to you like a child, or that she's just that despicable of a person. And they make that apparent when they explain the reason why Velma's mother left her, which further devolves her awful character even more. I don't think I've actively rooted for a heart attack before, but this is a really big exception. <laughs> Velma. I wasn't that big of a fan of Daphne. She's not anything around the idea of uninteresting, but to me everyone else has had a more iconic flair around them. That grew on me over time, but I swear the group wouldn't be Mystery Incorporated without her. Daphne is often portrayed as an enthusiastic and altruistic teenager, and often has creative and unique ways to come in clutch for her crew because of it. She's more than just a pretty face, she's the spine that supports the group whenever they find themselves in the pinch. Velma said, nope, not, we're gonna f*** all of it up. Let's take everything we knew about Daphne, throw that all completely out the window, and make her into a violent, self-centered, popular teenager who has a more forced relationship with Velma than succeeding in jamming a triangle block into a circle. Fred probably got the worst end of the stick here, instead of being the one who's actively the most clever in utilizing traps or rallying his group to help solve the mystery since he's their leader. Here he's a snobby, privileged kid who is among the most popular in his class and is often sexist, offensive, or just straight up an idiot. Notice I didn't say teenager because as the story goes on, we learn he's still a prepubescent man-child, where they often make dumb and tired jokes about his dingling. That's literally the sum up of his character. Have fun with that. Shaggy isn't even Shaggy. Like, not at all. And I know you can say the same thing about the rest of the characters, but here it just hits different and not in a good way. I mean, it's Shaggy. How could you screw him up? I think it has something to do with drugs, which I hate. I don't like you, Norville. Never mind. He doesn't have an unnaturally huge appetite. You know, the kind that will legit put Goku under the table. And he's not perpetually scared or terrified of anything. He's just often there to try and help assist Velma and be the butt of every, I don't know, joke. He's locked into an unrequited love with her. And nearly half the scenes that does or doesn't involve him has him mocked for it. I don't know how they've managed to make the most entertainingly cowardice and funniest character into a punching bag. All I know is that nearly everything that has amalgamated into the form of this cartoon has failed me. Oh yeah, and Scooby's a girl. If you know the context of this, and let's face it, you probably do, you'll know that this is kind of weird. Everyone has either been race swapped or completely overhauled into something that's so far from what Scooby-Doo represents. Even calling this show Velma is a stretch, and that's an understatement. I thought watching more of the series would open up the characters a bit more, but I guess that's my fault for having the benefit of a doubt. As I mentioned before, the humor is just... Wow, aside from maybe one or two jokes, I've barely cracked a smile. People jotted this all down into a script, looked at it and read actual words to a group of people, and thought, yeah, two roaches smashing each other is funny. All of these jokes either just fall flat and die, or just directly insult you in the most blatantly offensive way. There's no in-between, that's how little variety this show has to offer. Literally, everyone on screen has either disgusted me or made me actively feel pain from the amount of cringe from their dialogue. I don't like a single character in this show. And I thought it'd be Norville's father, since he's more of Shaggy than whatever Norville is supposed to be. But everyone is so mean-spirited that they often take shots at him for at least being a good person. They couldn't even do visual jokes justice. Something as simple as a stealth bit. <gasps> That's the joke. And then the parents vanish and she just flops on the couch. So yeah, that whole thing was just pointless. They make even the most cliche jokes suck. <sighs> Alright, I'm sorry. I could cherry pick every single nook and cranny of this show, but an animation of this caliber has never made me so ill during its run. And basically every other living soul who has forsaken themselves to watch the show has already beaten into an unrecognizable pulp. And the second season is coming. I can't even get through the first. I really wanted to watch past episode 4, but I couldn't do it. This show is so full of itself. Who was this for? And I'm sure as hell I have no intention on hate watching this. I legitimately lost any and all interest. Nearly every joke, every potential cliche, every second that passes absolutely shreds any identity it tries to form. And by the end of what patience I had left, I was just angry. I can't write a good joke or often make others burst into a laughing fit, but I got one joke. You know what I would rather do than watch Velma? That. Two hours of animated duck butter. That's my limit. I'm done. All of you OB Cool Scooby Doo an apology. I don't really have too much more to say. I think this accurately portrays what me and many others feel about this show, so my gift from me to you.
Wait, no! No! 